Thank you guys for all being here tonight. Uh, this, is, this is outstanding. Um, we started the Hall of Fame six years ago, um, and we started the Hall of Fame to celebrate and to promote entrepreneurship in our state. Um, our mission is twofold. So number one, we want to raise the awareness of impact that successful entrepreneurs have had on the Commonwealth. We want entrepreneurs to be celebrated in the same way that the basketball players get celebrated, the same way that the horses of the state get celebrated. And that's really why we started this to begin with. So in, uh, in your programs on page six, you'll actually see the different initiatives of the Hall of Fame, and there are three of them that are listed. The first two are uh, in order. The first one is the induction ceremony, and that is what we're here tonight, this celebration. And the next one is the Founders Series. So that's a video series that takes the stories of these inductees and it shares it beyond the audience that's here tonight. Those two initiatives are designed to execute on the first part of this mission. The second part of our mission is to encourage future entrepreneurs to pursue similar ambitious endeavors. And it excites me that the inductees of the Hall of Fame have rallied behind this part of the mission as well. Um, and they've, they've rallied behind it to a degree where they've will, they're willing to invest in the next generation of entrepreneurs in our state. Sitting at my table tonight is one of the previous inductees, uh, former president of the University of Kentucky, uh, President Lee Todd. And it wasn't, uh, it wasn't too many years ago that I was sitting at a table in your office and uh, as a student at the University of Kentucky, I used to, uh, I used to bug his secretary to death to get meetings with this man. I mean, I would call her every day, I would email her, I would text her, I would Snapchat her, whatever, whatever it would take to get through Judy. I remember Judy. And the reason that I wanted that meeting so bad with President Todd was because I knew that, I knew that President Todd was a successful entrepreneur himself, and I had entrepreneurial ambitions that I wanted to consult with him. And I was, I was about to graduate uh, during this meeting several years ago, and I'm going to graduate with my computer science degree, kind of weighing my options post-graduation. You know, what do I do? What I want to do in my heart is I want, to, I want to start this software company. I want to be an entrepreneur. But I also had these, I had these great job opportunities that had lined up, and these were, these were well-paying jobs as a software engineer. So as I sat in President Todd's office that day, sharing with him these options. You know, on the one hand, start this software company, no clue really what I was gonna do or how to get started, uh, no guarantees, lots of unknowns. Um, or do I go take the software job and nice salary, solid benefits, a very clear path. And, and I remember he stops me mid-sentence and he says, Brian, if what you're passionate about if what you truly want to do is start your own company, then just go do it. Just go try it for a year. Try it for two years. See what happens. If it succeeds, then great. And if not, if it fails, well, then those software jobs, they're still going to be there in a couple years. So what he did for me, what he did for me that night was he gave me permission so he gave me permission to, to try and permission to fail. He didn't write me a check. He didn't invest in my company right off the bat. He didn't write my business plan for me or connect me to my first few customers. He simply gave me permission to try to do my own thing. And he gave me permission to fail at it. Now after that, he continued to support me in many different initiatives. He eventually has invested in some of my my ventures, and he's supported me in many ways since then. And that's, that's a big part of why we started the Hall of Fame six years ago, was we wanted to give permission, and we wanted to give support to future entrepreneurs that they too can pursue their dreams, they too can pursue their ambitions through entrepreneurship. Take, for example, Rebecca Wheeling. So Rebecca, started her company in 2013, and since then she's created 31 jobs for the state of Kentucky. Her company, Schedule It, is an insurance claim scheduling software company. They've scheduled over 40,000 claims to date, 
raised a first round of funding in 2015, and they're now on to raising a second round of funding. Or take Nate Morris, Rubicon Global. So this was a 2014 emerging entrepreneur in the Kentucky Entrepreneur Hall of Fame class. He was named a Fortune Magazine's 40 Under 40, raised $100 million for his company so far. Now Nate's company, Rubicon Global, what they do is they essentially are transforming the way that trash is collected around the, around the globe. <clears throat> Nate will often joke with me and say, hey, I'm really just a garbage man, Brian. Like that's, that's what I do. And then I have to remind him that most garbage men aren't worth hundreds of millions of dollars uh, like Nate. But that's, that's another great example of the type of entrepreneur that, that Kentucky has, has been able to breed. So in order to encourage and assist more companies like this, uh, the Hall of Fame has launched an initiative called the Awesome Fellowship Program. And in just three years, the fellowship program has accepted 22 companies. Those companies have created 104 jobs, and those companies have raised more than $5 million in outside investment. So I ask that we celebrate entrepreneurship tonight and that we continue to encourage entrepreneurship tomorrow. At this time, I'd like to ask all of the previous inductees that are in attendance tonight of the Kentucky Entrepreneur Hall of Fame, I'd like to ask you guys to make your way to the stage over here to my right, uh, where we'll be recognizing each one of them. So when I, look at the, when I look at the wall of the Kentucky Entrepreneur Hall of Fame and I see the 29 inductees, soon to be 33, I see a group of successful entrepreneurs who have dedicated their lives to entrepreneurship and they're now willing to invest in future generations of entrepreneurs in our state. Many of these previous inductees have made commitment to invest their time and they've also made commitment to invest their money into new businesses and entrepreneurs in Kentucky. And it pleases me to announce that every single one of the previous inductees that's gonna step foot on this stage in just a moment has not only invested their time very generously, but has also invested money to support things like the Entrepreneur Hall of Fame and like the fellowship program. And if it wasn't for their support, then we would not be able to do things like the fellowship program. We would not be able to provide the resources that we've been able to provide to these entrepreneurs in their journeys. So first we have Lee Todd, class of 2010, Projectron and Databeam. <clears throat> so former UK President Lee Todd founded two high-tech firms, Databeam and Projectron. Databeam developed and manufactured a high-resolution teleconferencing system in the early days of this technology and was sold to IBM in 1998. Next is John Y. Brown, class of 2010, KFC. He made it into a global brand, and he's been one of the biggest advocates for the Hall of Fame since its inception. John Y. Brown is the kind of person that will constantly encourage the people around him, constantly pushing them to be a better version of themselves and to reach their potential, ultimately. Dana Bowers, class of 2011, iPay Technologies. During her tenure, iPay became the largest independent electronic bill provider in the U.S. iPay was sold in 2010 to Jack Henry and Associates, and Dana continues to invest in her community and the entrepreneurs within it. Bill Samuels, Jr., class of 2011, Maker's Mark. <laughs> Maker's Mark was founded in 1954. In 1980, it was the first distillery in America to be recognized as a national historic landmark. By 2010, the company had surpassed one million cases bottled. Billy Harper, class of 2013, Harper Industries. In 1980, Mr. Harper founded Harper Industries. Harper Industries now includes seven construction-related divisions with offices in Kentucky and Tennessee and it has construction sites in more than 20 states. John Williams, class of 2014, CSI. <laughs> 
Founder and chairman of CSI, his company provided customers with integrated and streamlined technology solutions. As of 2014, CSI revenues were $213 million, with over $26 million in net profit. Jim Booth, class of 2014, Booth Energy Group. <laughs> Mr. Booth co-founded his first contract mining company and was earning more than a million dollars a year by his 28th birthday. Booth has since diversified his business holdings and now owns dozens of companies. James Patterson, class of 2015. He founded Rallies and Long John Silvers. As of 2014, Long John Silvers has more than 1,300 franchise units, employing more than 8,400 workers. He then became a Wendy's franchisee and formed Western Restaurants Incorporated, which operated 47 Wendy's. And Phil Greer, class of 2015, Greer Companies. In the 1980s, Greer partnered with Craig Dunn to form Dunn Greer Realtors, and shortly thereafter, Greer Companies was born. Greer dove into the restaurant industry by opening up franchises of Shoney's, Fazoli's, and Cheddar's. They employ over 6,500 people and generate over $200 million in annual sales. Let's give it up one more time for all of the previous inductees. Thank you all.